Hello everyone, I'm Harvey from Elixnode and today I'm going to be showing a complete guide to the plugin Skin Restorer. So, Skin Restorer is a plugin where it gives the ability to players to change their skin in game by simply typing just a command. It's quite often used by crack servers who want to use skins as you're always set to Steve or Alex on those servers automatically. You can use this plugin on the server platforms Craft Bucket, Spigot, Paper Spigot, Taco Spigot, and Sponge Vanilla. And you can use this plugin on the proxies Bungie Cord, Waterfall, Flex Pipe, and Velocity Powered. Anyway, in this video, I'm going to be showing you every single command, feature, and file in the config of the plugin. Let's start firstly with the commands. So I'm going to be going through every single command that this plugin features. The first command is slash skin, which comes up with the help page for every single f command that you will need to know for this plugin. If you want to see previous skins that you've used, do the command slash skins, which will bring up a GUI. As you can see, I've used Notch and Funny Guy, which you'll see later in the video. And if you want to change your skin in game, what you have to do is slash skin and then the IGN of any player that you want to use. So I could use absolutely anyone, but I'm going to use Notch. And as you can see, I've been turned into Notch. Obviously, it's not just Notch that works, and you can use every single Minecraft player ever. You can also use links like Imja or something like that to change your skin to a specific skin that someone isn't already using. And say you want to get rid of your skin, like I don't want to be Notch anymore, do the command slash skin clear, and you'll be gone back to your normal skin. And if you're an admin and you want to change someone else's, do slash skin clear, and then their username, and I'll do it with myself, and it'll do with that. It's good to use that if someone's using like a inappropriate skin or something like that. The command slash skin update will update the player's skin. Such SR drop will remove a skin or player's data from the files. And we're gonna be going into that in a little bit more detail later. And another command that we're gonna be going into more detail later is the command slash SR create custom, where you can create your own skins to put into the config. Next up, SR reload, it reloads all of your configs and locale. So if you make any changes, they get put into the game. And if you want to see the properties of any player that you've used, do the command slash SR props and then their username, like mine is the Ultra Harvey. And this is all of my data that's on the plugin, including a skin texture you can go on the internet and see. And that's it. That's all of the commands that are actually on the plugin. So now we're going to be moving on to the config and files so you know what is in there. So as you can see, I'm on the Elixir node website now and I'm going to be opening up the skin restorer folder and you can see that there are five folders and files into this which is players, skins, command messages, properties, config YML and messages.yml and I'm going to be going through every single one. Let's start with the folder players which has all of the data for all of your players that are currently on your server so that if they relog they have the skin that they left with. I actually left the server before recording this, so I'm not in here, but there would be a file named the Ultra Harvey. The next folder, Skins, will have all of the skins that have ever been loaded onto your Minecraft server. And do you remember a couple minutes ago where I mentioned about the command slash SR create custom, where you create your own skin? And this is where you do it here. And to create your own custom skin, what you need to do is you need to head over to this website, which will be linked in the description. And you can upload your own skin, which you can get from somewhere like NameMC which I previously downloaded here. And then down below, you need to put the name of the skin, of which we'll do slash skin, and then put that name, which I'm going to be calling myself Funny Guy. And then you click Upload, and you should get an automatic download here, like I have funnyguy.skin. Obviously, it'll be whatever you named it. Now you need to upload that .skin file that you just downloaded, and head back to your Minecraft server and do the command slash SR reload. So once you've done the command slash SR reload, like I'm doing here, you can do the command slash skins, and as you can see, funny guy has been added to my GUI. And once I've selected it, I'm now funny guy. I didn't actually look at this skin beforehand, and oh my god, them shades are so cool. <laughs> Anyways, that's it for the skins folder, and now we're going to be moving on to command messages.properties, which is actually a file that has all of the error messages for the plugin. However, I do not recommend that you change anything in this file, as it's pretty irrelevant, I'm not going to lie. And now the next file is the most important file in the whole place, and that's config.yml. This is where you configure your whole plugin to suit it for yourself. I'm going to be going through every single thing that's in here, so let's go. The first line here, skin without perm, is where the players will be able to change their skin without permission if turned on true. But if it's turned off, players will require the node skinsrestorer.command.set. 
and skinrestorer.command. Oh, and also, by the way, if you want to see all of the permission nodes, head to the link that's currently on screen and in the description. Anyways, let's get back to the config. So if you want to set a cooldown for players changing skins, this is the line here. Do it in seconds. And if you if someone's made an error like a URL is wrong or something, this is the cooldown here for that. The next few lines is for the customization of your plugin so it can look cool and be suited just for you and your server. If you turn on this enable custom helpline here, it will take the helpline from your messages.yml which you can see on screen here. And we'll put that in the help instead of their default one. Which is good for if you want to customize colors and stuff like that and have a color theme. But you don't have to do it. And the next one here, disable prefix, will ignore the messages what .yml where it will say prefix in there. And if you want every single person that joins your server to be automatically allocated a random skin, this section here is just for you. You can turn it on and put a skin on or multiple skins that people will be randomly allocated. And if you turn on this apply for premium thing, it will make it so only people who have an Alex skin or a Steve skin, so a default skin, will be changed to one of the skins that are listed below, instead of everyone being changed to one of them. The disabled skin sections below will restrict people from changing their skins to these names. So this is used for if you don't want people to impersonate like the owner or, or a YouTuber or something like that. And I think that's a really cool feature that they've added because you can never be too safe. In the custom GUI section here, if you turn that on, it'll only show these names in the GUI. And this is also quite useful for restricting people. And that's it for the customization section, and we're going to move on to the advanced section now. But this is typically quite irrelevant for small servers, but we're going to briefly go over them. Per skins permissions allows the usage of per skin permission. Skin expires after is the amount of time that skins will be stored in the database before it requests it again in minutes. Multi bungee is for people who are having problems with the bungee cord setup and it's still not working, so you have to resort to over here. And this bit here is if you want to set up a database, a MySQL database or something like that, and you want it to connect to it for its data, just input all of your things here, like the host and the port and the password, and then it automatically go to that MySQL database. No skin if login cancelled is to stop the process of changing the skin if an anti-bot plugin or something like that denies the login to the player so it doesn't spam up all your data and all that. And this next one here I think is quite useful if you want to be a bit restrictive. Uh, turn this on and it will only allow players to use certain links like Imja, as it's got listed here, to change their skin to when doing the command slash skin and then link, which can be quite useful to protect your server and then won't let people bypass it and abuse it for inappropriate skins. For mine skin API key, you don't need to do this unless you're using skin URL API and you just need to put your API key for lower mine skin request times anyway. And that's actually it for the config. So now we're going to be finally heading over to the messages.yml page where you can change any custom message in the whole plugin to make your plugin a bit more customized. Feel free to do this however, you don't have to do this because all it will do is change the message that is sent when you send any command. For example, if I just change this 4 to a C, it will just change that error to a red color. Anyways, that's it. That's our complete guide to Skin Restorer in one video. And if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to comment them down below or contact us through the link that's on screen right now and in the description. Anyways, thank you for watching this video. I will see you later. Goodbye.